Welcome to Off Grid Path. This is a 12 part series on how we converted a rundown static caravan into our dream cabin here in the UK. I want to deep dive into how we went from this dilapidated static caravan into our cozy cabin home with no experience whatsoever. For those of you who are wanting to do something similar, I'll be taking you through all of the things that worked really well and also the countless mistakes and things that definitely didn't work throughout the whole process. If you want to check out this series and more videos like this, then just head over to my YouTube channel, Off Grid Path, and subscribe for more updates. Welcome to part six of our 12 part series where we renovate a static caravan into our dream cabin home. So before I start this episode, what I wanted to go through, which is what I haven't done and I've kind of missed out in the in the past five parts of this series is how we went about leveling off the caravan because it's quite a interesting topic uh, especially when you'll see it later on in this episode us trying to start the kitchen because it really came into forced end so to level off the caravan the chassis we inspected the chassis underneath and it was in fairly good condition uh, but the the, the caravan was not level and we tried to level that off with a car jack uh, went went through lots of things online about how to level off caravans and you get you can get specific equipment to level a caravan but I didn't want to spend that money and I just thought I'd try it uh, you know with with a couple of car jacks first of all just to try and see if we can get it level now the problem we had leveling off the caravan is because the caravan was in a pretty bad state the chassis itself was fine but to level it off, what was happening is we'd level off sort of one end, like this end, and instead of the whole thing kind of coming up like that evenly, what would happen is just the end would come up. It would kind of, you know, almost buckle. So so it, it was very difficult to level off because as soon as you jacked a certain bit of it up, only that bit would go up and the whole thing would flex and you wouldn't get an even kind of, you know, trying to level it off like that. It would just flex on one end. So it was pretty much a lost cause um, to, to level that off. We did the best job we could, um, but essentially it meant that we were starting with a with a with uh, an unlevel uh, caravan. So that made things tricky, certainly down the line when we come to, to doing the kitchen and things like that because everything was un just not level everything was wonky so uh, certainly you know in the parts that you've seen up until now that didn't wasn't a huge issue we noticed it for sure but it really comes into play when you're finishing things off and you're starting to put the last sort of finishing touches second fixes on things that uh, you can really see where everything is kind of not level and it's very easy to see so the spirit level kind of went out of the window fairly early on because you know although we wanted certain things to go in level some of the things um, that we were putting in you just had to do by eye which was a, even probably the best way of doing it I know that sounds strange but if you know certain things we were putting in uh, if you went by the spirit level it made everything look really off uh, so it was sometimes better just to go by eye to make it everything kind of seem okay but yeah it was a bit of an issue trying to level the, ca the, the caravan and it just didn't work really in the end we're getting to the point now where uh, we're starting to do the roof the ceiling in the cabin and we're using six by one because it was the cheapest at the time and these were these you basically see six by one usually on on big barns on farms and things like that that's what they use to clad the outside of barns with probably not the best stuff to put inside a home uh i'd i'd, I'd say but we basically put it everywhere <laughs> inside the cabin because we had a lot of it and it was it's fairly cheap so doing the roof again this is going to be another big mistake that we made when we pulled the hardboard down off the roof and we saw the rafters that was great the whole of the they had insulation on top of the hardboard just resting on top and the roof just next to the the sort of tin roof the outer layer was some membrane some waterproof membrane so that was in and the what the what the plan was and what we did was to basically put the boards up and once a board goes up we'd then stuff insulation in and now some of you will, will know why that is wrong um, we didn't at the time but if you're stuffing insulation in you're not leaving any room for any airflow for it to breathe and and you know avoid any damp issues 
so that's what we did. It was the wrong thing to do. And the, the best thing that we could have done in that situation was to get some some quite some thinner, I don't know, maybe 50 mil Kingspan um, to just kind of friction fit that into in, in between the, the roofing joists um, and just fit that in. So there was an air gap in between the the mem waterproof membrane and the Kingspan insulation. Uh, we didn't do that because Kingspan was expensive. Um, um, we didn't have the money to do that. The only thing we had was uh, rock wall. Um, the problem with the rock wall we had is, is it was too thick for where it needed to go. We would have had to have kind of, um, you know, added wood to those um, joists to then rest that in place and then put boarding over the top didn't know any of this at the time which is why we just put boards up and then stuffed it so just for you if you're thinking about doing something similar i would avoid doing that you definitely need airflow running through the the uh, the roof so that the insulation doesn't get damp i have to say we have taken a bit down actually a bit of wood since down uh, just to inspect it and see how it's kind of fairing up and surprisingly it's really dry so it hasn't been an issue just yet i don't know if we just got lucky there if the burn has been drying it out or we're just you know the dew point hasn't been an issue for us or whatever that is but we've luckily got away with that for now i'm not saying that will be the case in the future but for now it's fine so also we got the bedroom carpeted and this was actually a friend who used to be a carpet fitter so this is one of the things this is the your, your trade up with with tools i know after doing a bit of research i could have fitted the carpet it probably would have taken me a day to fit the carpet just because uh, i've never done it before and i'll be learning how to do it but you need a couple of very specific tools to do that and they would have cost in the region of about 40 to 60 pounds ish for those tools so we could have bought those tools and done it but the problem is we never you would have used those tools again it's kind of a one-time use it's not like i'm planning on laying carpet anytime soon so I had a friend who used to be a carpet fitter and he does it occasionally on the side uh, for mates and things like that. And uh, so he was more than willing to come around and just wanted a couple of bowls of wine, which was fantastic. It was a win-win situation. And it took him about literally 20, 30 minutes just to lay that bit of carpet, put a bit of underlay down um, and then the carpet over the top and he was done in and out. And that just goes to show that his, you know, his experience really pays off there would have taken me a day it saved me the time it was just a couple of bottles of wine cost less than than buying the tools and you know it would have been quite cool to learn how to do it and just get a grasp on it but it was a one-time thing if we were carpeting the whole place then maybe i would have thought of doing it but um for that it just worked out to be fine just to get a friend to do it so that was great as you can see now the cabin's starting to take some shape carrying on with the roof again just using the six by one to go in and it's quite interesting at this point there's up uh this point in the build up until this point we hadn't really cared so much about how things were going to look and the aesthetic of things because everything we were doing to the cabin we knew that would be something going over it which would be the kind of neat finishing part so all of the kind of osb on the walls you know if the cut wasn't quite great or if it was just a bit off it didn't really matter so much because we knew that we were going to be cladding over that so this was the first time doing the the ceiling the roof uh, cladding that that we knew that you know this is it this is what we're going to see that's the final kind of um bit of that build is you know that's going to be on show so all of a sudden you take a bit more care on your cuts about the lengths you double check things in terms of measurements and things like that and you just want it to be a, as nice a finish as you possibly could get it so yeah the roof was looking really good at this point and the, the cabin was really starting to take shape we've got osb on the walls um you know everything's starting to get a bit more defined now and we're starting to look into more the finishing parts rather than the kind of structural you know parts like building walls and things like that so it's quite a nice nice position to be in now in, in the cabin and now we're looking at sort of doing the roofing in the bedroom and also carrying on the girlfriend carrying on with the tiling as well in the bathroom so you know things were happening now uh in you know bathrooms sort of going quite well and the bedroom we're starting to look at more loft space in the bedroom and again the reason for that was just for storage so that was a case of just putting up osb boards and and just figuring out 
how big that loft space is going to be and then also access to it so just remembering to cut out um, a little square for that knowing that we're going to put a, a hatch uh, for access into that bit we did insulate in between that uh, we, we certainly insulated the, the roof where we put osb up there again we stuffed that in uh, it was just the wrong thing to do not allowing any airflow but the bit in the roof we also decided to insulate as well just uh, you know this was the bedroom end of the cabin and we knew that we weren't going to get a huge amount of heat through there from the burner because it's got to that heat's got to travel down through the corridor and in you know sort of spill into the bedroom so we knew that was going to not be a huge amount of heat there so we wanted to insulate it as much as possible um you know especially in the winters and things like that so we just boarded up one end of the uh, loft space just so we know it would finish there and yeah really happy with that extra extra storage or storage space so now just finishing off a bit of the the roofing side so you know by the end of this episode we've got all of the 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 ceiling on essentially throughout the cabin we've got the the six by one in the kitchen and lounge and then we've got the kind of osb with a uh, lino in in the bathroom and then just finishing off with osb in the bedroom and the corridor so after having done that we've basically now got the walls all the walls up and the ceiling everything insulated so the cabin's really taken shape now and you can really feel that insulation working um, and the cabin's a lot warmer all the holes are plugged up uh, insulations in and with that burner flowing we we realized that we needed windows open pretty sharpish because it was just getting so hot so i just want to show you a sort of finished view of of the ceilings now so you can see everything in and it's really nice having that osb up and having everything finished because the you know the cabins takes a lot of shape and it's coming to life you know so it's a really encouraging moment and this is about december in the build and our aim was to be in there so this is yeah beginning of december probably about the second or third of december and our aim at this point is to be in there living uh for christmas day we wanted to have christmas dinner in the cabin and be living in the cabin so it was a big push now to get the cabin done um so the next big task for me was building the kitchen and the kitchen now at this point we had a really good idea of what we wanted the kitchen to be and we basically modeled that on my girlfriend's flat she's got a flat with a kitchen in and a surprisingly pretty much similar layout to the cabin her flat uh one bedroom flat and the the kitchen is um a good size kitchen it had a big worktop um so we pretty much modeled the kitchen on her kitchen and so the idea being that the worktop which i'm sitting at now we wanted that to be huge you know as big as it could be because that was going to double up as our kitchen prep area also probably do a lot of work from home so that would double up as a desk as well like a workspace and also double up as a, a dining table as well because we don't have enough space for a dining table and any kind of projects and things like that so this workspace was you know going to be a breakfast bar dining table desk food prep area an area for any kind of projects that you might that, you know that we might be doing so it was really fundamental one to have that large prep area because i hate having a small and caravans are are notorious for this so having such a small kitchen with very small prep area and i don't like being on top of myself you know um so we wanted that large prep area also my goal with the kitchen was to make it level and like i was saying earlier with the cabin being completely out of level and very wonky in every area my main goal with the cabin was to really make these work surfaces level no matter how out of level the cabin was the work surfaces were going to be level that was my goal so you'll see me throughout this kitchen build you know using the spirit level on every single moment i wanted to make sure it was um, solid and level also the kitchen unit was actually going to be structural as well the whole thing was going to be obviously drilled into the floor and into the walls and you imagine this l-shaped kitchen kitchen coming out really makes the whole cabin like super structural you know it just adds to that structural integrity of the cabin even though we've got these stud walls in now um fairly solid walls we wanted the kitchen to be um you know part of the structure so it's absolutely solid 
So we were gifted a, a sink uh, unit, which was great. Uh, that saved a bit of money. And now you can see that I'm starting to do the, the base of the kitchen. So I've got this kind of, um, you know, jotted down what I thought worked in the in, in a little notebook of what the design was going to be and started off with the base and really working now up, base, base up. So we've got, you know, at this point, just working on the main island uh, What's well, not an island, just the, the L shape coming out of the kitchen worktop. So I decided to put, you know, you've got like a bit of a layer at the bottom where you'd normally have a kickboard and stuff like that. Interestingly, I did that and I put one in with the idea of having a kickboard in eventually. I still haven't done a kickboard, but, you know, realized that actually I d didn't need to do that. I could have just gone straight down to the floor. There was no need to do this kind of airy bottom section which was about five inches you know high which is just a gap underneath um there wasn't any need to do that they do that in kitchens i think so they can access pipe work and things like that but there was really no need for me to do that i just did it because that's what i thought you were supposed to do um, and i think it is you know you are but there was no reason for me to do that so made the base so we had a bit of a, a gap uh, for a kickboard and things like that an open space underneath and you can see, you know, it's a very simple process, really. Again, I had an idea of how the kitchen was going to go. Obviously, never built a kitchen before, but it's very much working it out as I went with the idea of knowing what it was going to look like, but also, you know, really kind of using my head as as I went on with the build. So again, we had lots of uh, OSB, and we cut a few offcuts of wood, but used mainly mainly stud work kind of. Uh, wood which you can buy which i got from wix or wherever it was because that they had a deal on on that so i decided to use some nice wood for you know the structural side of of the of the kitchen so the kitchen is very much overkill and i will go into that in a lot more detail in part seven the next part uh, but this is the end of part six so if you want to see the the kitchen build in part seven then just tune in for part seven but thank you so much for watching and again if you have any comments or any questions just leave those in the comment section below and i'll do my best to get back to you but for now cheers and hopefully see you on the next episode thanks